Welcome to the Kevin and Fred Show. I am your host, Kevin Kaufman, and along with my business partner, Fred Weaver, we bring to you our podcast where we highlight some of the best and brightest in the real estate industry, along with a weekly segment called Industry Headlines. We are a proud member of the Industry Syndicate, family of real estate podcast, and we are so glad that you are listening and tuning in today, and we hope you enjoy our show. All right, we are back on the Kevin and Fred show. And this week, I am excited to be joined by my new friend, uh, Susie Carter. Susie, how are you doing today? I am so spectacular today. It is, I'm so excited about business right now and life right now. Like it's just, I love when, I love being an entrepreneur because every day is different and every day is the same and every day is miraculous, right? It's however you plant that seed in your mind of what it's gonna be, whatever you decide it's gonna be. Yeah, uh, I heard somebody say it this way one time. It's all a story. We were making it up. It's all a story. It's, I, t- I totally agree with that. So, Susie, let's let's do this. Let's start here for the listener that because for the most part, our audience is is real estate agents, but we've got some people that are kind of I'll say around the industry, and some folks that are just uh, who are who are also just entrepreneurs, right? Because um, at the end of the day, that's that's a, that's I know that's at the heart of what you do and real estate is full of entrepreneurs. And so I would love to just, if we could give a quick introduction on who are you and kind of what do you do? And then I've got a bunch of questions I wanna dig into with you. So hopefully I'll put yeah. you on the hot seat, but I figured out. Well, perfect. So I will start with real estate. I'm a real estate investor that I have made millions in real estate. It is my passion, right? I love it. I like to, finding a really good property of bones and build it up, flip it, keep it, rent it, right? I've, I've lost millions in real estate as well. <laughs> let me let me be transparent. 2007 was not kind to me. I didn't think rough. I'd ever go back in the market again, but I learned a lot in the market, right? And so um, I do business consulting. I'm the profit coach and my clients gave me that name. I help entrepreneurs build seven and eight figure businesses. I am the money, honey. So if you wanna make more money, leverage your money, monetize that money, monetize what you do, I'm your girl for that. That's fantastic. So why don't we start that? How, how did you like, how do you get to become that person? Like, how do you get to become that niche? Tell us a little bit about your, I guess your business journey and kind of getting started because I don't, I don't know that it was the typical journey. Uh, and so I'd love to hear, kind of hear that from you. Is entrepreneurship ever the typical journey? <laughs> we do not know what we're signing up for when we did this, but here's what I will say. I knew that I couldn't work for anyone because nobody's the boss of me. I learned that really pretty quickly. I'm very independent. I'm very, some people can say righteous, right? But I'm very independent. I'm a leader, right? So I started out and I've been an entrepreneur since I was 12 years old, right? So I grew up with nine brothers and sisters, Bobby, Ronnie, Stevie, Terry, Joni, Shelly, Susie, Kelly, Debbie. Wow. And my, you know, my, we were poor, right? My dad was in the military and my mom was a seamstress. And we lived in 1,200 square feet, Kevin, one bathroom, six girls, three boys. And I made a decision early on. I am not living this way. And everything was brown. Everything was brown because that many kids, you just have to have brown, brown furniture, brown walls, brown carpet, brown. (laughs) So I remember in seventh grade going to Joni Ring's house and everything was white. And I'm like, wow. (laughs) And they had a four bedroom house. They had three bathrooms. And I'm like, oh. I see what I can do now, right? (laughs) So that was my first really step into something could be different. Say that again. How old were you? I was in seventh grade. So what are you, 12, right? You're 12 in seventh grade. So I uh, became an entrepreneur early. I would sell anything, right? Anything that you could sell from magazines to cookies to if you oh you need your house clean I can do that oh you need me to babysit I can do that oh you need me to mow your lawn I can do that right so I've always been the I can do that girl not knowing how to do it I will say that so my vocation is I started out as a hairdresser and I got married really young because in a big family dad said go get a husband go get a job you're moving out at 18 well my little spicy self said I'm 17 I'm almost 18 I'm moving out I got a job I got an apartment I moved out and I, oh, I had to pay a dollar for a can of tuna. That was the first reality of knowing how much stuff costs. I'm like, a dollar for a can of tuna? (laughs) That's so funny. It's a bargain. So I realized I met my husband, got married. Here was the deal. I saw this beautiful man. He was an Adonis with muscles. He was the manager at the job I was working at. I was a sales associate. And then he had a car and a checkbook. I'm like, this must be a husband. (laughs) So I married him. 
<laughs> he was an Adonis. <laughs> And then I realized that's not how you pick a husband. So we didn't, we only stayed married for five years, but we have two beautiful daughters. And so the unfortunate thing, I had a bad picker, right? He wasn't a good husband, right? So I had no child support, no alimony, and I'm out with my two little kids. They were 18 months and six months old. When you leave when your kids are that young, you got to figure out your hustle muscle fast. Yeah. And so I was a hairdresser. So I built my business to a quarter of a million dollars a year as a hairdresser. Most people did $30,000 a year. Paul Mitchell found me and said, what are you doing? How do you do that? I'm like, oh, I'll show you. So I started doing these little cluster classes, not knowing it wasn't a strategy to be a speaker. It wasn't a strategy to be a consultant. I just wanted to help my industry, right? And in that journey, I bought one, I bought a salon. We built it to the top 1% of the nation and top 10% of the world by putting systems and strategy in place. Because I had to learn so early how to make money duplicatable, I had to figure that out. And so once you understand it, you can do it in any industry. So we built the largest in training and development company in the beauty industry. And then 10, 15 years into it, we sold it to Ritker's Publishing for $10 million. Wow. So now I had a non-compete with that industry. So when the market crashed in 2007, I was heavily invested in real estate, over leveraged. I was, you know, most of the money I had put into our house, our dream house that we had built, I was beautiful. And I found myself with, you know, after the market hit, I lost 90% of my wealth. I lost a marriage of 17 years, right? I was broke and broken. And I remember being on the floor, Kevin, bawling, right? As you would be. Absolutely. Going, Why? I have been a good steward. I did everything the experts shared, right? I, I was a great wife, right? We had a great business. Why? And I heard this voice inside me. I call it God. You can call it whatever you want. And it said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Get up. Show them how it's done. This will be your biggest victory. This will be your biggest lesson. Get up. So I didn't get up immediately. I had a ball on the floor from, no, you know, I just did. I don't have 20 years to rebuild it, right? <laughs> I said all this story. And the reality was I had to get up. Like I'm, I'm fine, you know, I'm back in that situation. I get, gotta get my hustle muscle on. And sometimes when you have extreme failure, you throw the baby out with the bathwater, which is what I did. I threw away all my credibility. I'm like, who's gonna listen to me now? I lost all my money, right? I, I, I didn't do it right. Well, the reality, we all look back now, 2007, there was so much shenanigans going on in the housing market. There was so much shenanigans going on in the banking institute. No, nothing prepared any of us for that crash, right? So I had two clients. I had Lisa Nichols and I had John Asaroff. And so I said, I'm going to do for them what I did for myself. I built $10 million company. So I'm going to work with John, do a turnaround situation in his company. I'm going to work with Lisa. We took her business from 80,000 to 10 million. And so again, I just had, I got my head down to go. I know, I know money. I know wealth. I know business. Just do what you know and let go of the drama. Let go of the failure. Talk about the failure. God told me to talk about the failure. I'm like, I don't want to tell people that. That's messy. Right? <laughs> It's real though. And people, I, you know, I think it's, so this is my, my personal bias though, Susie is, uh, I've always found it, it, that people need to hear that. Cause there are so many, I hate this word. Uh, so it's not a good word in my, in my vocabulary gurus who from stage talk about all the good and it can feel so unrelatable to the person who, who's in the situation you were in, right. You yeah. know, when you were at rock bottom. And so I think people need to know that, Hey, the, the people who I'm going to take advice from, it's not perfect. Like, it's not like this linear path to success. It is actually, you know, the squiggly line. And there's a lot of failures along the way when you're going to build something worthwhile. I remember two years outside of that crash. I remember being, I rented this beach house and um, I'm up, I'm on the top patio and I'm looking in my, my, banking and I'm with my girlfriend who's been with me through this whole thing and my bank account said seven hundred and ninety six thousand dollars and she looks at me and she goes how did you do that I'm like I head down head down focus head down no frivolous spending head down task and maintenance head down the first thing I did was invest in real estate head down because I've made millions 
right? To go, okay, here's, I know this strategy works. I have to let that go and learn from those mistakes. I learned a ton that I did wrong, right? Heavily leveraged right? Where it was like, oh, use other people's money. Well, no, that doesn't work when the market crashes because then you're, you're upside down. Yep. And so going, okay, it didn't take me 10 years. Now I lost 10 million. So let me be clear. That $700,000 was just a, that was just a benchmark, right? I'm that sure. was just yeah. stake in the ground. Cause, but I didn't get caught up in, but it's not 10 million. I'm like, no, if you can do that in two years, that was in my savings. I wasn't living that lifestyle, right? I'm like saving everything, saving everything, saving everything, compiling again, building my building my assets again. And so anything's possible when you have a plan, you have a strategy, and you got to be committed to it because everybody wants to do it, but you're not committed to, you know, not going out to dinner. You're not committed to buying that greatest handbag, those shoes, that whatever you have to look good to do your vocation, right? That's just keeping up with somebody else's persona right? To go, what, what's my real goal? My goal for me is financial freedom. I want security because I never want to feel like that 22 year old girl that had no, you know, that had two little kids and couldn't provide for them. I'm like, I will never put myself in that position again. You know? So is that where, so, you know, you recently wrote another book uh, called Power Your Profits. Is, yes. the, is the decision to do that, to like write that book and kind of, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Bring that lesson to others is it because of the way you felt so personally you know you, how that was so impactful for you in your own life or was there something else driving you towards that well a couple things so i have t uh, nine other books in the beauty industry so i didn't have a book in this industry this industry meaning the entrepreneur space okay and so i know how hard it is to write a book promote a book it's you know a book is a really expensive business card and a credibility builder Right. So you're going to spend a lot of money to have an expensive business card and a credibility maker. But I didn't have it in this industry. I had lots of stories. I had lots of testimonials and something magical happens. Anyone on this call, if you're a real estate agent, you need to write a book. Why you're different. How do you serve your clients? That bumps up your credibility because would you rather buy a home from a best selling author or would you rather hire, you know, hire someone that's just selling houses? Right. It's a credibility play. So that was a credibility play. And in that, what I realized, what I'm a master at is building $10 million companies. That's my sweet spot. I just want to get you to 10 million. I don't care if you do hundreds of thousands, I'm not the right coach for you. I need that mindset, that person that says, I know if I, and it's not just about the money, Kevin, it's about our legacy play. Yeah. I believe that your gift from God is your life. Your gift back to God is what do you do with your life? What's the difference you're going to make? What's the different? What's the legacy you're going to leave your children from your character to your integrity to your financial well-being? It's holistic success, not just money. But ten million dollars. If I look at that business from one to ten million dollars, we have resources to give back to our community. We have resources to educate our children the way we didn't get educated. We have resources to invest back into our communities. Right. And so it's so much bigger than just the revenue because people you're just about money. Mm -mm. No, money is the byproduct of the work I do in the world. Yeah, I, I would say I, my argument would be you're not just about the money. And the way I would prove that is you, my guess is and I'm not asking you how much you have in your bank account. My guess is it's enough to live. So it's clearly not about the money, whereas the most people who whose viewpoint is it's all about the money. You're all about the money. They they don't have enough in their bank account, and it's that's the only reason they go to work tomorrow, or at least yes. it's the driving force. And so, when I, you know, at the end of the day, once I think when you get to the point where, you, I don't want to say figured it out, but like you realize there's a recipe for success in business, and and yeah, you might have to change some ingredients and change this and that, but at the end of the day, it is it there is a recipe for success and how to do this. It's a system, and if you follow it, you can be successful, which is what you're teaching everybody. Um, but you know, you, you don't have to do that. You really don't have to, if you don't want to. And I think that's, to me, that's actually proof of the opposite, which is, it's not about the money. It's really about that, that legacy play that you mentioned, the impact that you can have on others. And you, something you and I were talking about offline beforehand, like the impact or, or more importantly, the, the example you set for your children. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, my, I would met, met I have three financial coaches. So I just want you to hear this, like who's coaching you, right? As the business owner, the entrepreneur, the agent, right? Who, who do you strive to be like? So I have three financial coaches and they're like, I'm a little seasoned, Kevin. I'm not. But spicy. Young, I am spicy. <laughs> I've been waiting to use that. I'm so glad that came up. <laughs> and so my 
financial strategist is like, you know, you can retire, you can do this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to retire. Like, what am I going to do garden? I already tried that when I sold my company to Ritker's publishing, I didn't work for two years, right? Which was great. I needed it. I was burnt out. I was exhausted. You know, I got to really, you know, work on my home and hang out with friends and do things different, but my soul was still yearning to do something bigger. I didn't know what that was at the time. Right. I, I knew my work wasn't done. I just wasn't clear what was the work. Right. So I took the yeah. two years to go, what's my next? Right. And that's when I started working with Lisa Nichols. And I don't know if people know her, but she's one of the most sought after speakers from The Secret. She's she's been on Oprah. She's got two uh, New York Times bestselling books. Right. And so helping her build that brand had me fall in love with helping other people to get what they want versus it's just all about me. Yeah. Now I've always been about other people because my business is a training and development company, but it's different when you're building a multi-million dollar business with someone to watch their legacy change, right? And you're in it day in and day out. So that that was where the calling came. So I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not done yet, right? I don't wanna work as hard as I did in the 90s or 2000, Right, but I'm not done yet. I don't want to be on an airplane every weekend. I'm not done yet. Right, there's so much more work to do because I think people need to see leaders in different sizes and different colors and different yes. textures and different messages. Right, I'm going to resonate with somebody that you're not because you're you're a male. Yep. Right, and you're going to resonate. You're going to resonate more than I would because you're a male. Right, and then someone who's of African American is going to resonate different than somebody who's me. We might be two women, but it's just different. Sometimes we just need to hear the language that we need to hear from the person that most represents what I could be. Absolutely, and that was me in my industry. There were no business leaders, and again, God's saying, "So you're going to be it." I'm like, uh, -uh I don't want to do that. No, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. right? Because I was in the beauty industry. There was no women speakers. There was one, Patricia Frimp, and then she got out of the industry. And so it would all be men and overweight white men, like they're 50, 60. I'm 50 now, so I'm, I'm not jumping. They don't you know, seem so old them. anymore. <laughs> right. But as a kid at 22, 23, 24, I'm just watching these old dudes like, where's where's the person that looks like me? Can women do this? Because all I'm seeing everywhere is men. I want to see a woman that can do it. Right. And so realizing the power of your experience, the power of your story, the power of sharing that story to inspire people to do other things. The funny yes. thing is, like you said, our, our industry and every industry has this. There's a bunch of charlatans. Yeah. Right. I remember a coach. I was looking for, you know, another money coach just to go. What, what do I need to be looking at? What do I need to be investing in? And I said, well, how big is your portfolio? She's like, excuse me. Yeah. How big is your portfolio? Like, what are you investing in right now? How big is your assets? Like, what's your net worth? And she's like, that's rude. I'm like, you're trying to coach me about money and that's not rude. If you that's keep talking about money question. with me, right? Yes. If you want to know, if you become my client, Kevin, you're like, let me see. Okay, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Right? Because I want to I wanna follow someone that has truly walked the talk. It's like being a real estate agent and not owning a home. Like, dude, you got to go own a home. Yeah. Right? Well, so you either, because you either believe in this or, or you're set, you're just in sales. Right. And, and that's okay. But I think maybe be just be really clear about who that is. And, you know, for a, listening to your story and kind of reading about you uh, up front before we had initially scheduled this, what stood out to me is you didn't make money just by telling people how to make money. Right. And, and obviously you're very successful at coaching and helping people, but having gone through that in like built, you know, where you were at in the industry, um, and then how, how you just then took it and just kind of kept, uh, evolving organically to me, that's so important. That's yeah. so there's such a different perspective when you have been quote unquote in the trenches, or you've just got, you've got some dirt under your fingernails, uh, <laughs> when it comes to business and it's not just from a theoretical, uh, tactical, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. It's a whole lot different when you actually have the personal experience to then draw from and and it's you know it's just not just an idea it's actually things that you've done and learned from yeah and you can smell the tag you know this is yeah. a theory a mile away when you're in it you're like that's bullshit that's not gonna work sorry right it's just sure. no I'm you can so, say whatever the hell you i'm want. so okay. frustrated with the industry and all these gurus saying just sit back and rake in the cash just do a you know a low-hanging fruit no bullshit if they don't have the database if you don't have the database that's all hustle muscle right yeah with integrity, I don't mean hustle like I'm hustling people. I'm just mean getting up early, staying up late, doing what it takes to hit their goals, hit your key performance indicators. So many people sit back and think it's passively gonna happen. Now I will admit I did that, I'm gonna tell you. 
I did that. I did that in the, um, in 1985, um, no, 1995, I'm aging myself now, 19, 1995, because I wanted, I wanted to get married again, right? I'd been through this, I, I'd learned, I'm seasoned, and literally I was waiting for him to drop out of the sky, right? I'm like, okay, he's, he's just gonna, he's gonna find me, right? I'm gonna let God, I'm Magic. gonna surrender. No, no, it's marketing, right? So I put an ad in the newspaper, Kevin, newspaper, that's how old I am. And I said, single, sexy mom seeking, hunk of burden love, rebel with the cause, must be a uh, biker that drink, drink champagne, must be business minded and educated and physically fit, right? And then, oh, my husband showed up, right? I went on lots of dates, met a lot of frogs, but I had to be radical in action. It didn't just happen. And business is the same way. It's not gonna just happen. Who are the people you need to follow? And then do the homework. Don't just yes. listen to it. <laughs> yes. You know, get so, me all hot, Kevin. I'm getting all hot. <laughs> you're you're right, reminding me of two things I want to share with you. Number one, um, there was there was a lady I used to know who was the first, um, I guess technically second CEO of Keller Williams Realty, Mo Anderson. And she always used to say, pray, but move your feet. Yes. And everyone and, and so you also mentioned Lisa Nichols earlier in the secret. And I think that everyone missed the well, like, okay, we can just all we just hope it comes to fruition because it's something we want. No, you got to move your feet. Like you you have to go and move move your feet. So that that's one thing I wanted to point out because to me that is that is something I see over and over again. Like we're not gonna just hope things come to us and think good thoughts and then eventually we're gonna have everything we want. Like you said, the husband wasn't gonna fall, just fall out of the sky, right? Eventually you had to do something. The next thing you said though. And this is a really interesting experience uh, and timing wise for me for you to say that. So it was about marketing. And so I'm at the doctor yesterday. With, so I go to a great functional medicine doctor where like my appointments are like two hours long once a quarter. Right. It's amazing. I love it. Me too. Me and, too. And so uh, my mom has decided she wants to hire my doctor. And so they're talking and, you know, she's got a lot of preconceived notions around uh, healthcare and medicine and, and, th and things like that. So he starts asking her some questions around why she thinks certain things. And he asked her about, you know, I, I won't go into the details, but it was, it was basically bad, you know, mortality rates on different diseases that have been around for a long time. And, you know, one of them was gross, like 10 times more than the other example, but the, but the lower example, just it's so well marketed for a good yes. reason, by the yes. way, like absolutely for good reason. But you would think that it's the number one cause of this certain problem and um, has nothing to do with the C word, by the way, it's totally different. Um, right. But it was, he was like, literally, you just don't understand that that's marketing. That's not medicine. And right. so it was fun for me to like, I knew that I hadn't put it in those words right. and then for her to kind of like eyes open. So to me, that yeah, is marketing. I think of as icky as politics can be, politics is, is marketing, right? Yes. And usually the winner of an election is a better marketer that they're, they're not necessarily the better person for the job they're right. they have a better marketing strategy and so in business it's the same thing we have to be great at marketing and i know that covers so much ground but it's such a big part of the puzzle well let me give you an interesting stat first of all 88 percent of small businesses no matter what the vocation is are making less than 100 grand a year 2.5 percent are doing a half a million only 1.7% of small businesses in this country hit that million dollar mark. Wow. That is atrocious. Now, when I look at that and about marketing, 15% of our financial success is based on our vocation. So for me as a speaker, it's how I speak. For me as a leader, it's how I lead. For me as a teacher, it's how I facilitate my programs. 15%. Now, my 15% has to be the bomb.com. If you're an agent, 15%, you got to be a good agent. You got to be on time. You got to be, you have to be world class. Yes. The other 85% is sales, marketing, operations, finance, and leadership. The other 85%, so you be the expert in real estate. You, you do that. What I'm going to support you with is looking at what is your sales strategy? What is your marketing strategy? How, what's the operation? What's the follow through? What's the client fulfillment, right? What's the finances? What are the KPIs? If you don't manage that stuff, you are just throwing money in the wind or spitting in the wind or peeing in the wind, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Like, I hope that if you guys, listeners, if you got nothing else from that, you realize like being a great agent, it is so important to be a great agent, being a great advocate for your clients, your fiduciary. And that's according to what Susie just said, that's about 15% of what's going to make up your success. And, but most, a lot of agents I know, 
It's part of the reason why we have such a high failure rate in real estate and in entrepreneurship in general, focus on so many other things that aren't that important, right? We focus on the small things that lead to success instead of all of, you know, the big things that, that are the bigger rocks, if you will. Yes. That's what I always say. And I have it on my computer, right? What's the highest income producing activity only you can do, right? It's on my computer because I can get caught up in my business being busy, 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 busy. Yeah. And I catch myself, Kevin, I'm like, why am I doing this? Josie can do it. Why am I doing this? Sam can do it. I don't need to do this. I find myself saving my team. So ding dong, right? I'm just sharing truth, right? Because I'm like, this is not the highest income producing activity. So then I can stop, delegate it to Sam and go, okay, this right now is our highest income producing activity. Having meetings, you have doing podcasts, getting my name out there, getting our company out there, right? Same thing for you as a business owner. Like if you want to be a top agent, you have to have an assistant. You won't have time to do the things that need to get done. You need to go meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting because you know you got to go see 10 people to close one. And that's if you're a good salesperson, yeah. right? So I need you to look at what are those things you're doing. You're, you're, step, you're stepping over dollars, picking up pennies because you think you're saving money. No, you just lost, you know, a $70,000 contract, a $10,000 contract, whatever that is. Yeah. And I think too, what I see a lot in our industry is it has to do with, well, I'm the only one that can do that. Like it's, there's this control piece as if we are the only person on the planet qualified to do this certain task to send the right email the right way right which is such an ego to like at the heart it's such an ego thing where we're just worried it's going to be wrong we might look bad blah 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 and the reality is oh, okay you can keep doing that but to your point realize that you, what you do the thing that you do that's the most valuable that we do as agents is the thing that really where we have to spend the vast majority of our time because everything else can be done by other people who are quite frankly, mostly going to be better at you than, than it, than doing, at doing it. Well, I think as entrepreneurs, we're all control freaks, right? We're leaders. Yeah. We, our personalities are very dominant. We're very driven. And the best dis description of control, cause I'm a control freak. I'm not going to lie. I can micromanage the hell out of anybody and I don't want to, it just happens. It's just natural. <laughs> cause I, you know, I never want to be that 22 year old girl. Right. So I'm like, not on my watch. <laughs> And so it, I think it's called uh, Roads of Th Days of Thunder with Tom Cruise. Yeah. And he's a race car driver and he's talking to his coach and he's, uh, and he's talking about control. And he said, control is an illusion. There is no control. You can't control this car. The only thing you control is your state of mind going into a curve, your state of mind of handling an obstacle, the state of mind. You can't control the car. You can't control the raceway. You can't control the other drivers. So let that go and be in the car. And I'm like, oh my God, that was the best description because we are all control freaks so to go, good. that's right. So who can do this? And I love that you said that. You find a team. I always tell my assistant, if I have to tell you what to do, one of us isn't needed. Oh, that's like a punch. Because yeah. if you're having to tell them what to do, one, you're hiring poorly. And two, they're not the right people. My team alleviates stuff for me. And if they're not, we have a meeting, yeah. right? And it's usually, Kevin, because I took the control back. It's like I start hoarding the task again, not on purpose. That's my humanity. That's my like, oopsie. But that's a sign yeah. that you don't that you're not you don't have the right people. And then I think the other thing where we have to learn and grow as business owners and entrepreneurs is if we're constantly finding ourselves in that position that like the like it starts here. Who are we hot? Like yeah. why are you know, it's like what you mentioned about, you know, the first husband picking the wrong like we're, we're picking the wrong picker was off and it's and it's our fault because we're the ones that picked them like we're the ones Absolutely. that wrote you know made the offer and and so we've got to, we've got to get good at that too like that's such an important skill as well in, in my belief system absolutely and you have to be willing to walk away you will probably outgrow the people that you bring on your team before they outgrow you right because if not they'd be an entrepreneur yeah. Right. So I always let my team know there's a, there's a season, right? Some people come into your life for a reason. Some people come into your life for a season and some people come into your life for a lifetime. Hopefully the lifetime is your significant other, right? Hopefully, right? But employees are never a lifetime, right? They're a lesson or they're a reason, right? They're fulfilling a reason to go, oh, the idea of business growth is when you hire someone and you're doing a hundred grand versus the million, that's different skill sets for people. 
right? You didn't even have the skill sets. The difference is entrepreneurs, we're staying up, we're listening to this podcast. We're getting online watching YouTube. We're, we're buying courses to figure out, I gotta figure this stuff out because I gotta do this thing, whatever this thing is. Most employees don't do that. They're like, yeah. I got a paycheck, no, 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 no. They're happy. Well, okay, next, right? And not mean, look, this took me years to say next because I used to cry. Why are they leaving me? I'm such a good boss. I take care of them. No, you're codependent. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, so <laughs> as we start to wrap I make up, myself laugh, Kevin. I'm sorry because it's funny. I, I love it. It's good. <laughs> Um, I have one more question for you, but before I ask that, I'm going to ask a kind of a bonus for anybody listening, um, who would like to just learn more about what you do or pick up a copy of, of, of your new book, or just kind of follow along your journey. What's the best way for people to do that? Okay. So I have a prize for you because I love bearing gifts. I love that. And my purpose is to make a difference in this world. So I'm going to give you a free e-copy of the book. Right, so I gave awesome. the link to Kevin, which is uh, poweryourprofitsbook.com forward slash ebook, but he'll put it in the show notes. You don't have to remember yep. all that. I'm just gonna say that. We'll link. And so that's the first thing. You can find me by my name, Susie Carter, C-A-R-D, as in dinero and dollar, E-R, because I'm the money coach, all over social media. That's my website so that you can go investigate and go, is this community right for me now i will say people come for the education and they stay for my tribe because i have a bunch of badass business people who are game changers in the industry making a difference and supporting each other i think we as leaders need to create environments that way where there's so much so many environments that are so competitive yeah. like let's work in collaboration we're not even if there's another real estate agent you're not in competition you're in compliment because sometimes people aren't going to like me I better have a stable of people I can recommend to go, if I'm not the right coach, who is? That's our responsibility yeah. as business owners to go, it's not a match for me. So let's say I'm an agent and Kevin is more of a match for this client, right? And I know that, especially if you're working in an office together, to go, the goal is to serve the client. The client will always come back around. Yeah. I will tell you, my agent I've, I've used for five houses. That's how good he is, right? And in between that, he never lets me forget him. Right, so if you think about how many millions of dollars that man has made by serving me and my community, like game changer. Yep, uh, absolutely. Uh, so that was, first of all, that was wonderful. And thank you for the book guys. And that is in the show notes. Um, let, me, let me ask you this last question to, to kind of to sign off. I heard you mention in another interview that business was, um, it's like a, I think you referenced like a locker combo. So, you know, a, a combo on a locker where it's got to like be ticked just right. Could you, would yeah. you mind sharing that kind of framework or thought process with us before we go? I will. So I have a little example. Oh, look right? at that. Awesome. So, and it's branded, right? I did not even know that. Now I feel like that was a serendipitous question. That's awesome. Right. Well, cause I think what I experienced coaching entrepreneurs is we go, that didn't work. I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no. Don't throw it out. So it's like when, you know, when you go to the gym or I remember these from high school, right? And you're in a hurry and you're trying to do it and you're like, you know, right, left, right. And one little tick off, that sucker will not open, right? And you do it again and you're in a hurry, it's not opening, right? And you get frustrated, but you know, you got to get the contents in that, right? And the contents is, the, the locker is your business, right? The contents is money. The contents is serving clients. So you got to sit down, be patient, go one tick off. It's not going to open. So in your sales, one tick off, it's not going to open. In your marketing, one tick off, it's not going to open. And so you have to step back. That's why working on your business versus in your business is so powerful because I have to look, I have failures, right? I don't, my campaigns don't go like I want. And instead of getting mad, cause I used to get mad like that, Shit doesn't work, right? Sorry, uh, that doesn't work. You can say whatever like, the hell you want. It's okay. okay. It's a, you can say fuck if you want. It's allowed on okay. this podcast. I've got a little sailor mouth, and sometimes yeah. it just comes out, right? Because it just I get so passionate, and so I realize, like, okay, Sue's, what do we need to? What do we need to fine tune? It, it's language. Most of this time, it's a, it's not working. It's language, or you know, because you're we're trying to do what's hot, what's not. No, you want to be consistent. 
You want to be consistent. Consistency is where the jewels are. Consistency is where the diamonds are. Don't, there is no get rich quick. Sorry, ain't going to happen. There is consistency. It's planning. It's fine tuning. It's tweaking the lock to go, ah, oh, that's going to open. And then once you do open it, boom, systems. Just duplicate, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? That's what I love. People go, how do you keep doing this for yourself and clients? I'm like, rinse and repeat rinse and repeat. Like this brand I launched um, in 2009, September 2019. So that full first year, we did $1.4 million in a launch year. That doesn't happen without strategy, yeah. right? Without tweaking, 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 tweaking. And they're like, how did you do that? I followed what's in the book. You too can do it. It's in the book. Just do the exercises. Don't read the book. And when you get the book, some of people, I love books. I like the smell of it. Look, I, this, this is for real. I like to go to places in the book. You don't have to read it um, in order. If you're having trouble with math, go to chapter eight. Math is money. Money is fun. If you want my $100,000 consulting script, that works in every industry, go to page 199 and get my script. It's a script I've been using for 20 years and I close $120,000 clients all the time. Wow. That's my job. That's my role. And I use the stair step questions on page 199. So it's, it's full of gems, but you got to implement the gem. I can't do it for you. Kevin can't do it for you. You've got to be in that radical action that we started and that we talked about. That's awesome. Um, all right, guys, we're going to leave it there. I think that was really good. Go follow Susie. Download the book. Link again is in the show notes. Uh, Susie, thank you so much for taking some time out of your extremely busy schedule to, uh, to chat with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing me with your audience. And I want you guys to remember this. Benjamin Franklin said, take the coins from your purse, invest them in your mind, and your mind will fill your purse overflowing. Ooh, I never heard that. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. Mic, drop mic drop. Hot. Here we go. Wait, wait. Mic drop. <laughs> love. Oh, I love it. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by Kevin and Fred's community at EXP Realty. Learn why over 1,000 real estate agents joined EXP Realty last week. Join us for an informational webinar this Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Register at intro to exprealty.com.